we realize that climate change is a big issue. And so we are trying to figure out what are the actions that we need, what to do and how to prepare to respond to climate change. We know that extremes are changing. Um, we know that many extreme frequencies and magnitudes are most likely to go up. Um, and therefore we need better forecasts to prepare for them. We need water for the environment to drink, to live, but also water is very dangerous. So understanding the fluctuations of rivers and how much water will be and whether sometimes it's dangerous or not, it's, it's critical for the well-being of the society. Every year we see that things like droughts and floods affect uh, huge numbers of populations and economies around the world and all of these have spillover effects in different ways and uh, one of the things that we can really do working together is being able to provide a more global framework for these kinds of systems. One of the first steps is actually to have the information, the necessary information to make decisions, to make informed decisions. We need to get better in reacting to extremes. We need to learn earlier what happens. The earlier we know what happens, um, the easier we can do something about it. The GeoGlobe's partnership is organized under GEO, the Group on Earth Observation, and specifically focuses on global water sustainability and bringing together some of the world leaders in NASA, NOAA, ECMWF, ESRI and the World Bank in order to develop tools that can provide a forecast on every river of the world to be able to be downloaded and accessed locally. Look at any stream segment anywhere in the world to try and get both a feel for what the flows could be in the next two weeks as well as what the flows could have been in the last 40 years. The GeoGlow's ECMWF Streamflow Services is a, a hydroinformatics tool that gives insight into hydrology where none existed before, while also providing a 15-day ensemble forecast on every river in the world. And use those both for uh, operational planning in terms of what to do about water infrastructure in the next two weeks, as well as uh, planning from the historical point of view if you wanted to see what the return flows could be or how those are changing over time or to try and see how to uh, better design a lot of the systems that are out there. GeoGlow centralizes infrastructure and also resources in such a way that everybody has access to the same information. The philosophy behind GeoGlow's and the Global Streamflow Forecast Service is really that that's done centrally by organizations that can afford it or funded by the World Bank. So then local communities don't have to invest in that and they can invest in really answering questions which matter to them. So working together to solve the most difficult problems such as flood forecasting or hydrological forecasting requires collaboration across the globe from loads of different types of entities from a European or from a global level, but also to a small scale regional level. And that's where GeoGlose comes in. It glues all those different agencies together. It makes sure that the information flows between them. It makes sure that they're connected to each other and talk to each other. The GeoGlose ECMWF forecast system does best with bias correction. And the bias correction needs a lot of in situ data to try and uh, better calibrate in a way the information that's there so that you can get better results from it. GeoGlose is analysis ready data that is providing not only the information and knowledge, but it's allowing the local governments and national governments, irregardless of the country, to make the decisions in time with the Ganges. If you look at what happened kind of in the past hundred years, they will have uh, what we call a regime, a, a variation in the river discharge, which will be very different from those three rivers. But the day-to-day -day change, it really influenced by what happened very recently in terms of rainfall. Um, so it's really important to simulate that daily, daily variation and not just to rely on what we call the climatological information. And this is what our models are able to do. And when then you plug in weather forecasts, then you can anticipate episodes, for example, flooding episodes. If weather forecasts predict very intense rainfall in the next five days, then 
we can translate that in whether it, it's likely to generate flooding or not. Hydroelectrical company in Honduras that during Hurricane Ita and Iota were able to make decisions in between the storms to release water in such a way that they could have the space, the necessary space for the second, for the water that the second storm was dumping and in such a way save the people of the Valle del Sula. It makes a difference to people. We know that, for example, floods are devastating. We know that water scarcity is really a big problem. And if, you know, me and my team, the European Centre, we can do a little bit to provide more information so then people can get prepared, um, nations can make decisions. It, it, it's amazing and, and, and we do that better and better. We're not just doing work to produce a report. We produce data that is then used and, and, and that's, that's uh, fantastic to be part of. I think the future for me is that GeoGloss has to or will go to a next level, which for me includes a, a model not just of a single component such as hydrology or water impact that really for me is um, sort of representing the Earth, representing a, a model of the Earth. So rather than just having a weather forecast and a land surface model, feeding into a logical model and doing maybe some impact modeling, it's all of these components together. It's one thing together. Um, it's really the integrating of those models, the regional and the global knowledge, into one single entity. So GeoGloss actually is allowing for that environment to, for all these powerful organizations to come together and, and respond to a societal need, which is the need for actionable information in such a way that the observations can be incorporated into the decision-making process.